Right, so we're going to begin to make a water pump. And not only that, construct it and build it into an end cap along with some plumbing and along with uh, the um, subtech valve, although you're not really going to see that um, in this particular movie. So this is the block of plastic. These are the dimensions that I'm starting with. And now it's over to me. All right, so we're gonna make our pump. So let me review what we've done so far. We've, gone what I, we've done what I would call stage one, which is we've drilled the hole for the water flow and we've drilled the hole for the, we've bored out the hole for the um, impeller to sit and we've even made the impeller. So we've done that pretty well. Now, let's, let's now think about the other side of the problem about fitting the motor and fitting the impeller and making it watertight. This is the interesting bit. So, the next thing to look at is the motor itself. It's basically what it looks like. Where is it? Here it is. Just this little 360 motor. They're great, really quite good. Cheap as chips. This is 12 volts because I'm going to be running the boat on 12. So, what I know is that this diameter here is uh, 28 mil. So I'm going to bore the other side at 30 to make room for the motor. This little boss here is 10 mil. I'm going to swap between metric and imperial when I have to because my leg is imperial, but this is good enough for now. And this boss sticks out around about 2 mil. Now it's very important that we locate that 10 mil boss because that will centre the motor in our block and we can screw it when we screw the thing to it, it'll screw it to that centralised point. So I want that 10mm boss to snugly fit into a hole that we turn. Um, but that's probably one of the... It's probably the, the only tricky bit of this next part. So, what we do, and we've done this before, where we've drilled a hole through something and we centre it up on that hole. So we've got the block now. The other side's all been worked through. There's a 4mm hole through the middle. Now, we centre it up on the lathe. If I check the depth here of the um, hole that we've made for the impeller, if I check the depth, that's 10mm. So we've got 10mm here. I think for everything we're going to do in the middle, we probably need about 7 which means on a, the whole thing is 25, just happens to be. That's the thickness of this uh, block of material I've been using. So what I'm left with, obviously, is 8 mil here. So what I think I need to do is rebate in here an 8 mil slot 30 by 8. That's step one. So the motor will, has got, the body of the motor has got room to fit. All right, all right, all right. Once I've done that, let me just uh, get rid of that. You can see that. The next step, and this is, this is a bit trickier, is I need to put this slot in here for the boss of the motor. Now, I'm going to make this more than two mil. I'm going to make it maybe three got a reason for that, um, but we'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to make that probably around about 3mm deep, but I'll, I'm going to test the motor in it, make sure it's a really snug fit. Once I've got that, that's all pretty good. The next step then, um, the next step then is to fit the seal. Now this is an interesting little component here. The seal is going to be this O-ring. And this O-ring is currently sitting on a 4mm um, uh, drill. And it fits quite nicely. It's quite snug. Now the size of the O-ring, so there it is on the shaft, the size of the O-ring to the outside, and this is where I'm now going to swap to Imperial, is 280 thousandths of an inch. That's the outside. The width of the O-ring is, in fact, uh, 65 
the thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to machine here and I'm going to aim for a little cavity in which to stick the o-ring. And what I'm going to aim for is uh, 55. Just enough to give some compression to the o-ring and clearly 280 thick. And, and I'll test this and I'll test it in the slot just to make sure it works. Before I go any further, let me explain what we're doing here. So the idea is we've got an impeller, as you've seen. There's an 8mm hole in the middle of the impeller. I'm going to make a piece of brass, going to turn it down so that it is an interference fit in it, it has to push in. I'm also going to add on a piece of shaft which is going to be 4mm thick, the same as that drill. Right through the middle of this, I'm going to drill it out to fit the spindle on the motor, whatever that is. And I'm just going to, therefore, while I'm doing this, be working with the brass bit. I'm not going to be pushing it in, obviously, before I get till I, till I have to. So this will then um, settle inside our plastic block. And here, there is this little rebated section there, little rebated section in which our o-ring goes. And here is our little rebated section that the motor fits into. Now what we're also going to make is a washer that's going to fit across here. I don't want the front of the motor doing that. And it's just going to push down onto that o-ring and make a nice tight fit, well not tight, but enough to stop the water getting in around there and the motor is going to sit here we're going to put screws through there to hold the motor on that's basically what happens, so we push this through and we push this on with the o-ring and it squishes up around there and makes a nice a nice seal, that's the plan so where are we up to? I have now drilled that little section. Now the thing is, I've got the, if this is the 10 mil rebate for the boss of the drill, of the, of the motor, and this is the little rebate for the o-ring, and that's the hole that fits through. If I make that a bit too deep, I can always put on the washer a little bit of extra material just there to push it in so I don't have to do it again. I'm hoping to get it perfectly first time, but we'll see about that. But this, when I make the washer, that's my chance to change things. And once that is on, I'm then going to uh, drill the holes through for the two and a half mil threads that hold this uh, motor on. I think I'm going to have to get some longer two and a half mil threads than you can just buy easily. I'll do that through eBay. But that's it. Have you got, have you got all that? And, and I think when you see the assembly, you'll see how it all works. There's a couple of tricky bits in this. Um, it's getting that width right here. It's getting this right. If we go too deep with the boss, then we can make, the, um, we can make this. This is going to be a, a little bit tricky, but that's going to solve our problems in case we do anything wrong. Let's go. So here we have the block of plastic, and you've seen me do this before. I'm milling it in my drill press. It's a very nice thing to do. Plastic's really soft, and the mill is well able to do that. Of course, I'm using a compound slide. Now I'm drilling the hole right through this that the water's going to flow through. <coughs> um, getting the center right on here for the cavity for the impeller pump. And once again, cross slide, uh, center drill, absolutely great for doing this kind of work. Very, very cheap, inexpensive, and, and really make this sort of stuff nicely accurate. So once I've done that, put it in the lathe. I'm now going to uh, bore it out so that it's nicely um, lined up. I'm, I'm actually, I've marked the, the, um, uh, the tool and you can see here now the o-ring in the bottom of its little cavity and it's a bit low. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a little washer, and these are the dimensions, just like I suggested, and it drops straight into that cavity like that, and that will now press down on that O-ring and fix it all up. So I've now screwed it in to, I had two goes at this, and I'm going to have to fill those other two holes. That's what happens sometimes. These holes are very difficult to get exactly right. And now I'm going to use this lovely block of plastic uh, to make some um, breather holes that are going to run through the end cap because the air needs to come out at the top and the water needs to go in at the bottom. Now this is a tube um, that I'm just going to run through. This is going to be a breather tube and that's going to be the little block and I've drilled a hole in that block so that um, the, the air can come up. Now I'm setting the depth here uh, with my pedestal drill, very handy thing to do. I've worked out where these holes are going to go through this little block <clears throat> and it's going to be, I could do some careful plumbing and soldering but honestly drilling holes in a block of plastic is a darn sight easier and I've designed all of this so that I can get the air both out into the top of the subtech valve and out from the subtech valve running then through the top and this is the one that goes through the top which is going to go straight to the breather tube in the conning tower. Alright so I've got that sorted a little bit of epoxy going on to there this is going to be um, now this is a this is a thicker piece of tube I think it's 8 mil and this is the tube that I'm going to use for the pump, for the water pump. And of course, the reason it, it, it goes down to the bottom is I want to suck the water right from the bottom of the tank. Now you can see in here an impeller that I have made out of brass. And honestly, forget it. It was a complete disaster, but I'm just using it here. Um, you'll see how to make a really good one later on. So I've uh, epoxied that on. I'm also screwing it on to add to the strength of the connection and that will now hold the pump. It's at an interesting angle but that's fine as long as the uh, as I can put a housing around it I really don't care about the angle and I've got to make room for other things. So this is now the top breather and this is where as I said the air is going to be drawn from the very top of the ballast tank down into the subtech valve and then through and out. So that's that's going to work quite nicely. I think you'll find um, just have to adjust that up. Now I, this block here that I've drilled very strategically goes onto that uh, plug and you can see right at the top at the apex the hole which is going to go straight to the um, straight to the breather tube on the conning tower. So all of that's pretty straightforward. It's a bit clunky but uh, this is great. I mean the, the pump is going to take up that amount of space anyway so I might as well use big chunks of plastic plus when I come to push it on it's nice to have a bit of strength there. So that's how it's looking. I'm now I'm making sure that I have a hatch into the uh, water pump because honestly I want to be able to take that off and let that breathe between, uh, between uh, every sail. There will be a drop or two that will get in no matter how uh, that's I just know that. So that's going to be it. It's fairly clunky but I'm going to put silastic under that and it's going to seal I think pretty well. Now this is out of focus but clearly I'm making the brass center pin for the impeller pump and I have now turned down out of plastic the same plastic I've made everything else out of um, the impeller uh, shell and I'm just using a saw now to cut slots into that by hand and I've got some one mil uh, plastic sheet that's going to go in there. I'm just going to super glue it in and obviously it's an interference fit with the uh, brass uh, centerpiece and when I finish this I've got to say it, it works really really well. Very very happy with this. So that's it in practice. I'm just getting these impellers. I actually just put them in the in the grinder and grind them down very gently to get the to get the size right and that's the that's almost finished. Just uh, a little bit of cleaning up and here it is in the pump and you can see the silastic and the hatch and it's it's sort of getting to the point now of being ready. The next thing that I do is a pressure test to make sure no bubbles are coming out anywhere and that it's all nice and secure and in fact it's it's really pretty. It did have a leak 
which I then had to fix with a bit more epoxy along the along the side. Now here is the boat in the water and now the pump has come on and I think you will find it takes about less than 20 seconds to completely surface and the, the motor you can hear is pumping water and in a minute it's going to pump air and that's pretty bloody good in my view. Very efficient.